spiritual gifts that come from the Holy Spirit. Now, in in Ephesians, the gifts from the Son, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, the fivefold ministry or office gifts or ministry gifts. They're spiritual gifts also. They're given to the church for edification. But they're given that the saints can go out and do the work of the ministry. And different, all churches have many ministries in them. You have some of us, some of us who are set for evangelism. Now all of us are supposed to do the work of an evangelist, but not everyone is an evangelist. Why? What's the message of the evangelist? It's the very heart of God, God Christ, and so when the apostle and prophet, they are foundational ministry gifts. They set the foundation. The cornerstone is Christ, but the foundation is the word of God, but they come with messages from God that the prophet comes to pluck up before he plants. The apostle, they have special messages. They set up churches. They set up, they set up Bible colleges. And then we got cute and, rena and, and, and renamed the missionaries. You won't find that word in the Bible. You'll find apostle, but you won't find missionary. So, amen. Mm -hmm. Say that again, Alshon. You won't find missionary. You won't find the term missionary in the church. All right? <laughs> I mean, not in the church, in the Bible. Bible. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, An apostle can't stand anything out of order. All right? Everything has to be order. All right? Amen. Structure. A prophet is a visionary, but they, it has to be in the order laid by the apostle. Then the prophet comes along and plants. The evangelist brings in the harvest, which is so. Now, once the soul is brought in, comes the pastor to do what? Feed, nurture, protect what? The flock of God. Mm -hmm. And what does the teacher do? The teacher will break this word down that a two-year-old will understand. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. They will broke. They will, they will give you the broadest scheme and the broadest meaning behind the message of this word. And in here we've got folk who've been in church all their life. And you got folk who are, who are this level, of, have brought themselves to this level of maturity in the anointing. Some of us are babes. Some of us are in kindergarten. Some of us are in high school. There's nothing wrong with that. Because all of us grow from first receiving the pure milk of the word. And that's what the teacher's job is. Give us the pure milk. And in the book of Romans, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 6 through 8, you've got the ones that the Father gives us. The moment we receive Christ, you've got it. And some of us are givers. Some of us are givers. He who gives with liberality, cheerfulness. That gift shows who are the kings of, they can just give and don't bother. They, they give them for the support of the ministry. They, uh, they, uh, they, they'll see someone in need and, and, and they'll just 
they'll just sow it into. Don't and don't bother. Some of us have the gift of mercy. All right. We open up our home to those who have nowhere to go. Gift of mercy. Some of us who ministers, we got to wait on the ministry. That is the office of people. Shown beautifully in the office of deacon. Because the Bible says that those have worked themselves on a good degree. And this gift of prophecy, when they prophesy in this one, it says, according to the proportion of faith. You do it by faith. That's why the Bible talks about we prophesy in what? Part. If we don't do this, all of this we showed last week, if you're not activating or operating, you're going against the word of God. We started off in our foundational scripture of 2 Timothy 1.6. Stir up the gift of God. which is in you by the putting on of my hand. Mm -hmm. uh, for God has not given us a what spirit of what? Fear. Yeah. But of power and of love, love and of sound mind. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible says it's the power of God who have saved us and called us with an holy call. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Getting back to that major text, when you are not operating in your spiritual gift or are not activating it, or, so, or the pastor or whoever it is, God tells to lay hands on you and, 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 and to impart to you the gift so it can be activated in you, so you can, you can do what you need to do in, in Christ, then guess what? Not only do you have to deal with it, but God really gonna deal with the person that told, he told to, to impart that gift. Because if you have a prayer language, if you got the prayer language, you're supposed to use it. And if you don't have it, ask. But it will ask, receive. That's what the word of God says. That's what Jesus said. <sighs> Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given us. The grace is given to us. The grace, the gift of grace is given. You don't work for a gift. You work for a prize, but you don't work for a gift. Why? Why don't you work for a prize? Because if you, good analogy. Next Saturday, Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao are going to fight for the prize of champion and best of the best in boxing. They got to work for that 12 rounds or less. They got to work for that. But I, I give you, if I'm just saying, I'm giving you this. Did you work for anything? No. Nope. You just received. Mm -hmm. That's the same way you, get the, you receive the gift of, of impartation. Anything is imparted to you. You just received it. You just received it. The same way you received your salvation, freely you received it, right? Well, freely give out that gift to someone else because he already done died for it. He's already risen for it. 
He's already ascended for it. All you gotta do is receive it. God bless you.